Maybe we could tailgate at some of the races and we have a nice little setup when we get there. Gotta turn it on. Hey, hey. Change of plans. All over the truck. There's another one there. Hey y'all, welcome back to Johnson Family Outdoors. Today we are back on the truck topper build. Why? Well, don't make me sleep in it. Just kidding. Before we get started, I want to thank you all for clicking on this video. And if you don't mind, hit that subscribe button while you're here. We'd love to have you along. So in the last video of our truck topper build, build, makeover, redo, remodel, makeover, we'll go, uh, refurbish. I got all kinds of them. But in the last video, we sprayed Dupacolor bed liner. It turned out pretty good. Oh, you see that? We have some of them coming if you're interested. And it turned out fantastic. Well, now... We want to put a simple roof rack on the top. You seen the price of the roof racks? They're not cheap, but I'm cheap. So we're going to do this on the cheap. We're going to do this as close to free as possible. Let's get to it. I'm not sure. I got to look back in this video. I'll probably find out when I'm editing this. But did I tell you what I'm making this out of? I'm trying to show you how to make. I think I might have. Well, I start talking. I have no idea. What day is it? No idea. Uh... Trying to figure out how we can make a roof rack for our topper budget, as in next to free. I think I did say this. I'm going to say it again. Price the angle iron out, 99 bucks for a six foot length. What I did to keep the cost down to next to nothing was I went to the ReStore in Chatham, Habitat for Humanity. I bought a king size bed frame. After cutting, I'll never see that again. After cutting, the rivets off of here and I end up with all these little brackets left over never know when you're gonna need a piece of metal for something I end up with this I've got two pieces of this and I got four pieces of this now I'm either gonna cut this down or this might be long enough I still got to measure it yet I already got holes cut in it because I popped the rivets out that is gonna be our topper 30 bucks I paid for that $30 for a king size bed frame uh, what I'm doing now is I got to cut out some brackets that are going to hold the angle iron up. Now I just cut this bracket here out. I'm going to bend it on a 90 here and maybe a 90 there. Now that'll make this stand straight up and down, which I'm not too sure I want to do that. I might want to tip it in just a little bit. This angle here might be a little more than this one, but that's how it's going to sit. I also got my punch marks in here to drill my holes. So There's going to be one hole in the top bar on and two are going to be anchored into the top of the topper top of the topper that's all I got so now real quick I'm gonna cut out four more three more not four I'm gonna cut out three more of these brackets I'm gonna clamp them all together to this one here which is already shaped and we're gonna get them all done up the same way and also keep in mind this is 16 gauge metal it's not exactly the thickest so once I do get this bent I'm gonna gusset the sides on it so that way it'll have a little more strength but like I said a minute ago and maybe I'll do it now <laughs> Let's get to cutting the rest of these out. Alright, we got our pieces all cut, trimmed up. I'm gonna see if we can sort of match these up with the one I got done here. Without causing any bloodshed because you know we're good for bloodshed. So now once I clamp all these together, I'm gonna do them all at the same time. I'm gonna shape them up, and that way we get sort of well, we'll just say sort of a uniform bracket. Alright, so now we got four brackets that are pretty close to the same. I think we can make that work. I think it'll be uh, much easier to drill our holes in here prior to bending it quarter inch holes are going in there and I got to find a quarter inch drill bit stand by 
Yep, you gotta drop all those metal shavings in your hunting boots. That way, you know, I don't know. Think, think. We got all our holes drilled. They're all looking pretty close. What happened there? I think I have one eye closed. No matter, we're gonna make it work. So I got, all I gotta do now is put these in the vise. We're gonna bend them up, put the angle on them. I'm not quite sure the angle yet, but we're just gonna get them over to the 90s. Then we're gonna set them on top of the topper and on top of the topper. I did it again. And uh, we'll figure out the proper angle from there. We're about to use our custom bending machine. Device. Come on. You've all done it. Don't tell me you have it. You've all done it. Let's get one bent up and see if we can make this thing work. Get this lined up on the line. I'm going to go with some gentle persuasion. Hang on. See where we're at. Not bad at all. And it's actually straight, if you can imagine that. Let's get the other end bent and see if we can keep that one straight too. The top is mounted to the actual table. It might hold better. Take that, that's broken glass. Not bad at all. So we started with this, made a template, cut them out, went to that, drilled our holes. That one's gonna haunt me. Drilled our holes. To get us a bracket like this right here. Stand up. Right, right there. Might do something here. I might put a just cut out a hole there just to lighten it up just a little bit. But the sides here are gonna get gusseted down here and down here. That way you give a little bit of more strength. This is only 16 gauge, so I don't want it bending. All right, here's our brackets. Not bad. Okay, we can see, now these, this angle on here, we're gonna be able to play with that a little bit to make sure it's level, but look at this one here. The distance between here and here is greater than the distance between here and here. Looks like I put a sharper bend on that one. And that one's a little more rounded over. I can put that back in the vise. And pound that out flat and that will stretch out actually let's do that right now and see if it works as you can see here we can gain a little bit of distance here just by sharpening up this edge here now we're not going to beat the daylights out of this because we don't really want to dent the metal we're just going to tap it down and see if we can gain a little bit I think we got a little more out of that. Also, what's making this one look a little smaller is this bend has gone a little far. It's going to end up coming up a few degrees, so I think we can make it all work. Well, I have adjusted the uh, bend on our brackets here. They seem to have turned out pretty good. The only thing I got left to do, like I said, on here is to gusset these in just so they're a little stronger. And we got our template drawn for our first one here. I'm debating whether to just kind of round this off a little bit. We're going to do one just straight up and down. Let's see how it looks. Let's go cut a piece of metal. Uh, it's 
piece is still a little bit warm, but we're going to give it a try here. So basically, I, I, so I did get a little bit of an arc on here. Not a whole lot. Nothing crazy. But this is going to get welded into here on both sides. Picking up what I'm throwing down. And that will be my gusset to support the bottom, support the top, and to support the extra weight. So I'll just weld this in there. Same on the other side. I'll just weld that one over there. Bob's your uncle. I didn't make you watch me cut the gussets. That wasn't the most exciting thing in the world. But So we got two cut for each one. Again, those are going to be sitting on the sides over there and welded in. And give us our strength. Well, this has happened to me on more than one occasion. You went in the house to have a sandwich. Next thing you know, you're falling asleep on the couch. See you next morning. Welcome back, y'all. <laughs> gotta get this thing finished. We got our brackets all done. We got our pieces cut yesterday. I say all done, they're not done. We gotta get this all welded on the sides there. I'm gonna see if we can make it work. Oh, I did yesterday. I did measure these brackets. I did measure this angle iron here. It is four feet across. So I can put one in the front, one in the back. That'll work out perfect without me having to cut it. It's a little bright too, ain't it? So you guys should we get a happy medium. Here, when I go there. There's dark. There's bright. There's where you want to be. Gotta make sure you're welding on a plastic table. She'll never notice that hole. guys as with everything else we got ourselves a change of plans no matter what i do this is not going to look very good having the sides enclosed i also wasn't really thinking about aerodynamics either and want to eliminate any possible whistling coming from these things through the wind so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut these down and i'm just going to put one in the middle here on the bottom it's going to offset to the top just a little bit to leave room for the nut i think that'll be a more better so this is basically what I'm talking about here so I'm gonna put one in the middle of each one like I said I'm gonna move this over here just so we can make room for the nut and the bolt and we'll tack that in it's not gonna be a full weld we're just gonna tack it in on each side top and bottom and that should be good enough to hold it there hey. no ah. no We got our pieces cut, let's weld them up. I'm just gonna spot them in at first. Gotta turn it on. Alright, get the rest of these tacked up, and I'll show you when we're done. Everything's welded up, now we just gotta clean it up.
Well, I think going this way was a much better option than trying to box in the ends. One, it's easier. You're not going to see this anyway. Now, what we're going to do is going to let these things cool off. They're a little hot. And we're going to give that the same, you see that? Truck bed, duple color truck bed liner. The same one I did the top rim. I'm going to get these things painted up. One coat on the outside. This stuff covers really well, really well. That dries, we'll get it flipped over and we'll get the inside done. And we're gonna call that one done. Did I say done? Yep, we're gonna call it done. We've got a good healthy coat of bed liner on both sides. We're just gonna let that set up. These are gonna be the cross pieces. We're gonna drill a couple holes in here. Mount them to the top. We should be good to go. We're going to gather up all our pieces here. Freshly coated with the bed liner. Now we're going to put it all in place. But we're not actually going to mount it. Why are we not going to mount it? Well, the hardware store doesn't have the hardware. And I don't have the hardware. So we're going to put it in place to see what it looks like. To see if we like it. And then uh, we'll find some hardware somewhere so we can mount it. Now I'm not concerned about drilling the four holes in the top of the topper. Uh, it is a $200 topper, so it's not like I bought a $1,000 topper going to drill holes in it. But I want to be able to remove the roof rack and plug the holes. So that's kind of what I'm waiting for. The hardware and the plugs to plug the holes so obviously it doesn't leak inside when I don't want the rack on it. Why do I want a roof rack? Well, until Jen, a couple years ago I had a kayak. And I liked the kayak. It was kind of a cruising kayak. You know, just cruise around the lake or the river or whatnot. Did fish out of it a couple times but I really didn't use it a whole lot. Well, I'd like to get another kayak. The problem with the old one was it stuck out of the back of my truck. But the new kayak I want to get is a fishing kayak and I can mount it to the roof of my truck instead of having it stick out the back of my truck. Just don't tell her. It's between us. Let's go gather up all the pieces. We'll put it in place and we'll see how it looks. And by the way, I did this for... 30 bucks. Screw one there. Screw one there. We'll do the front. Well, this is how it's going to look when it's mounted. Now you might be thinking, well, that sharp edge up there on that angle iron is going to wreak havoc on your kayak. Well, 
it might if I didn't put a pool noodle on it. So I'll just split a pool noodle in half, put it on top of there, tape it down or tie wrap it down. And, uh, and there you have it. So to recap just a little bit here, we've got a $200 topper, $55 in duplicolor bed liner, $30 in a king size bed frame. We're going to haul a kayak up there. I also put a rod holder up there, which is like a six inch PVC tube. That allows me to keep the bed of the truck clean. Change out the locking mechanism. I'm not a fan of this push button because all it has on the inside is this rusty mechanism here with a cable that goes over to here and this device here clamps onto here. I'm not really a fan of that. Plus, I don't have the keys for this, so I can't really lock it. Don't tell anybody that. Oh, there's another one there. The only thing I want to do is put some strip lights in there or some other type of lights in there that uh, I can just push a button at the back of the truck and it'll light up the inside so I can find what I need to find without looking for a flashlight. Oh, one more thing. The inside doesn't really show up well, but that is all felt. Felt or carpet or whatever they want to call that. That's what that there is. So it is somewhat insulated. So when she kicks me out, I'll sleep in the back of my truck. So if I want to go camping or fishing or road tripping to the races, maybe we could tailgate at some of the races. We have a nice little setup when we get there. Anyway, I'll see you on the next one. Oh, hit the subscribe button while you're here. I'd love to have you. Later. And I can haul everything up there from, say, a tube holder. A tube holder? No. A rod holder, which is a giant four or five. A rod holder, which is like a six inch PVC tube. Which is like a, I also put a rod holder up there, which is like a six inch PVC tube.